wanted to bring in a, a new little segment. We're going to talk about the top performers from week 12. Um, so I've got some guys that I want to highlight here because big week, Thanksgiving week, a lot of big games, a lot of big performances on both sides of the ball that I want to highlight. Um, I've got a couple of guys. Uh, you want me to go first or you want to go first? You can go first. I feel like I always go first. Okay. First guy I have that I want to highlight in my top performers of week 12 in the NFL is Jordan Love. Jordan that was Love. one of my guys. <laughs> hey, he's been playing. He had a good start, and then it kind of went downhill a little bit. He's turning it around. Um, his individual play has improved a lot. He's got the Packers in a position to potentially contend for the a wild card spot in the NFC. But on Thanksgiving Day, in a game where myself included, but I'd imagine a lot of people had the Lions etched in to win this one. He went out, he said, F what y'all think, F the predictions. I'm about to go who? 22 of 32, 268 yards. Three touchdowns, zero interceptions, and 39 yards rushing. Big, big win for Green Bay on Thanksgiving against Detroit. Division rival in Detroit had that crowd stunned early on. Crazy. Um, so, so shout out to Jordan Love, man. What a performance. Um, and he got a lot of different guys involved in this one, um, which was key because some of their receivers – Namely, Christian Watson had had really on and off starts to the season. Um, but Christian Watson first played the game, hit that big boy post to him. Um, and he was he was downloaded and ready to go from the start. Um, but Malik Heath, uh, Romeo Dobbs, Jaden Reed, like a lot of guys getting involved in the passing game. Big win, division rival on Thanksgiving. No better feeling. Um, so shout out to Jordan Love. Yeah, man, he was a he was a, one of my guys. Um, I, I wrote down a bunch of different people, but he was definitely one of the guys that you know what I'm saying he definitely needed to get some love. So that's because mm -hmm. a lot of people was an, another person, but bro, people were trying to be out on him. Like, bro, this is first year starting. I get right. it. This is like his fourth year. This is his first year starting, bro. I don't practice reps don't mean nothing compared to actual no. reps in the game, bro. It means absolutely nothing, bro. That scout D line doesn't hit you. No, <laughs> they don't. It's not the same, bro. Yeah. Come on. So, but yeah, all right. So my guy, I got, I got to bring this guy up, bro. I love this guy to death, bro. It's Kyron Williams. For mm -hmm. those who don't know, he's on he's on every fantasy team I have, every single one. Really? Like, wow. Every single one. That's that's why he's so near and dear to my heart, bro. But just as far as like a real life stat line, bro. First game back after four weeks, I was out with an ankle injury. Rushed 16 times, 143 yards, which is good in its own right. Then you add in six catches, 61 yards, two receiving touchdowns. That is 8.9 yards a carry. That is 204 yards per scrimmage. In his first game back after missing four games, that is elite, bro. And, and when you watch the runs, looked amazing, looked explosive. Looked fast, like the vision was there, the cuss was mm -hmm. there. The uh, he was always a good pass catcher, but um, but yeah, and he's getting he's getting plays drawn up for him. He's getting screens drawn up for him. The touchdown he had, I believe, out of the backfield, um, looked like it was that was where it was supposed to go. So he's getting featured, and he looks great, bro. Like started the season, I, I'm glad to see, and like this is from real right real life perspective, not fantasy. I'm glad to see that it wasn't like just like a fluky, like you get all the touches so you're going to do good type of thing. Like, no, he's he's legitimately a, a really good running back. He deserves his uh his shot, you know, to be featured a little bit. So shout out to Kyron Williams, man. Absolutely <laughs> dismantled the Cardinals. And mm -hmm. I believe for the second time, because the first game, I think he had like, bro had like 10 yards in the first half. And then they was like, all right, let's give him the ball. And had like 150 yards rushing in the second half alone. So absolutely destroyed the Cardinals. Yeah, he, he went crazy. He actually – single-handedly probably lost me um, a game <laughs> in fantasy because I was going against him. So him dropping 40 in somebody's flex <laughs> spot, so it's a little tough to deal with. Right, um, right, but, bro. yeah, Kyron had, Kyron had himself a day. Who needs Cooper Cup? Who needs Puka? You got Kyron. You got <laughs> Kyron, bro. You don't, need, you don't need neither of them guys. Uh, next guy I have here, actually going to stick to the same Packers-Lions game because – I wanted I wanted to spread it out a little bit more, but I I couldn't not shout this shout this guy out because he jumped off the film on the broadcast. 
the stats speak for themselves. Rashawn Gary, three sacks, seven total tackles, two forced fumbles, one fumble recovery. Absolutely feasted on what is one of the best offensive lines in football in Detroit. And basically, bro, made that start of the game for Jared Goff. Absolute hell. I was finishing up cooking and while I was watching this game, and it felt like every time I turned around to stir a pot or flip something, it was like, Jared Goff, fumble. Jared Goff, sack, fumble. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm like, bro, what is going on over here? Like, yeah, it isn't the rest. <laughs> yeah, that, that Packers defense was getting after it, and Rashawn Gary was the spearhead of that. So, had to make sure I shout him out. Like I said, two forced fumbles and a fumble recovery, three sacks, bro. Like, that is a monster, monster day. I think he had the most uh, sacks out of any player this past week. So, I had to make sure I shout him out. Yeah, hundred percent. Like I said, Jared Jared Goff's life was a living hell that whole game. Mm-hmm. Um, another one of my top performers. I'll stick to the offense. I'll save my defensive guy for a little bit later. But I gotta give my man B. John Robinson a shout out. Um, defeated Arthur Smith finally. <laughs> was able to actually get the ball. <laughs> but actually, rush for sixteen attempts. Clearly, sixteen attempts is just what you need to be great. Um, sixteen attempts, ninety-one rushing yards, five point seven to carry. Had a rushing touchdown. Then added in three catches, 32 yards, and a nice uh, receiving touchdown as well. And the main reason why I added this in here because it was against the Saints, who normally have a really good defense. Um, so the competition matters a little bit, you know what I mean? So I added that in there because, one, he's a rookie. These past couple times, past couple games, he's starting to get, you know, majority of the touches, and you can see it, like, when he gets the ball, like, good stuff happens. So hopefully that can continue to keep going because Arthur Smith loves to just – give the ball to Cordell Patterson for some reason. But, you know, if he can get the ball, special stuff happens. So shout out to him. My next guy, and I have a couple in here that I'm like, they weren't like the top, top guys, but I, they, I can't not bring them up. Um, and you'll appreciate this one. Um, I could have put multiple names for, for this. Um, but let's let's go with quarterback coach. Mike Sullivan, who was calling the plays in yeah. this week. And the Steelers had their first 400-yard game. We back. Bro, it's, it's been over 50 games since y'all did that. That <laughs> is me, insanity. Oh, man. We back, baby. Triple Bs. at Triple Bs. We back, baby. <laughs> High-powered offense. Let's go. Uh, but, but yeah, I also had down here, Pat Fryermuth had himself a big day, nine catches, 120 yards, um, and a big win division game still didn't put up a ton of, ton of points, but Hey, 400 yards is 400 yards. However you want to slice it up. Um, so shout out to the whole Steelers offense, really. <laughs> that could be mm-hmm. the top performer. Getting rid of Matt Canada, putting up 400 yards a week after, um, is definitely big for that locker room. Um, and then just generally how they're sitting in the AFC playoff picture. So shout out to them. 100%. Now my guy I want to have here, oh, let me, let me pull the stats up. Cause I don't want to discredit my guy. Yeah. You know I mean, and, and since you did me a solid, you shouted out my team. I'll yeah. shout out your team. I'll do you a solid. My man, Dak Prescott was hooping. Slaying my man, it. Da- my man, that's Prescott. MVP candidate, Dak Prescott. Might mm-hmm. have had in there. My man's. 22 completions, 331 yards, four TDs, absolutely dying up the the commanders. And the thing was, because I've heard a lot of people talk about, you know, reasons why he's not in the MVP conversation. Yeah, they they don't really win because of him. Kind of like a Purdy thing, kind of like a, I'd say Tua kind of a little bit. How like people say like, oh yeah, they're winning because the defense and this and like he's just game managing. He's slinging the ball, bro. Like, I don't know what games I've been watching. Yeah, the game, the defense has been playing well. Yes, I mean, they are these are teams with losing records, but at the end of the day, bro, it's a good they sign. They make the you, schedule. It's a good sign when you beat the teams that you're supposed to beat in ways you're supposed to beat them. Like when you right. actually you're not struggling against these bad teams, you're actually blowing them out. And as of right now, bro, he's dying, bro. What you want him to do? Because if he was out here game managing, yeah, I'd be like, bro, he stinks. He's only game managing. Now he's out here dying. Bro, Thank you can only you. do it against the bad team. What you want him to do? It's a lose lose, regardless, bro. So mm-hmm. it is what it is. Shout out to Dak. And then what I did have to add in here one more guy. I don't even have no stats put up. I just this was just off the straight eye test. Uh, Traverius Ward, the corner for the 49ers, mm-hmm. he had DK in prison. <laughs> like watching that game, 
he had him in in a <laughs> box, bro. Mm -hmm. I, I had to because I had to add in a defensive guy, and I was just thinking about it. I'm just watching the game um on Thanksgiving. I'm like, bro, where's DK at? Like, where's DK? Lamp. Then I seen like a clip. I seen because I, I, I he was playing well. I seen him on a lot of pass breakups. Then I just seen every play that they were lined up against each other to where like they were going at it. Bro, he was it was textbook, bro. Had him in prison to the point where bro DK was kind of in his own head, dropped the easy little hitch route. He he played a fantastic game. So shout out to him. I had, I had to get a defensive guy in there. Yeah, he had three PBUs in that game. He definitely was clamping up. Yeah, he he strapped. Um, I got two more little like honorable mention guys before I get into my last guy. Um, gotta shout out uh Jesse Bates. 12 Ooh, total yeah. tackles, which led the team. He had one pass breakup and then had the pick six, 92-yard pick six. Had to go the whole length of the field, basically. Mm -hmm. um, but put up a touchdown in that Falcons game that you were talking about, which was a big reason why they were able to win that game. And, again, was a big reason why they held the Saints without a touchdown in this entire game. Um, and had Derek Carr in the – I don't think it was the post game. I think he had media availability today. And they asked him about that play. And he said, you know, the guy just made a great play. You know, he's supposed to be in the middle of the field on cover three, and he wasn't there. Bro. Seems like he's just looking at your eyes. I don't know. I was about to you, say. Yeah, he's, he's watching you stare down this little post route right here, bro. What are you talking? It was a – bro, it was such a terrible read. Like, you weren't even thinking. The guy wasn't even open if Jesse Bates wasn't there. No, he was not. He wasn't even open regardless. So like I don't know what I don't know what he was looking at. Yeah, still still a great play by Jesse to go up and grab that one and crib it on the way back. Um, like I said, 12 total tackles, led the team. He's all over the field. He is the best and one of the only bright spots on that Atlanta Falcons defense. Um, so shout out to him. And I also have to shout out Josh Allen in a losing effort. Um, put up yeah. four total touchdowns. It was sloppy game like literally like it was pouring rain mm -hmm. um but i mean did everything that he could do um you know three, 29 of 51 passing 339 yards um two touchdowns one pick um and then ran for 81 yards and two touchdowns as well had some big big boy runs in the red zone for that bills team kept them in it all the way till the very end just he just can't ever get it done in overtime <laughs> Which is is tough, bro. It's like zero and six at OT, bro. Had the rules changed for him and still can't win an overtime game. Like, what are we doing here? Hey, you, he had the rule change. All you gotta do is get touchdown. Didn't get I mean, the touchdown. Gabe Davis, it wasn't locked, bro. He didn't know that. That's miscommunication, bro. That's bad, bro. That's a. I literally jumped out of my seat like touchdown. And then seeing that the ball was going the other way, and I was like, no, bro. Y'all going to let the Eagles squeak out with another one. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have one more guy? I do, but I don't. Want, well, I don't. I have one guy that we didn't mention, but I want you to say your guy first. I don't want to steal right. your guy. I'm keeping the same game. My last top performer uh, is Jalen Hurts. That's it, what it, that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> it, 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 it we it couldn't go unmentioned. Facts. Um, it's not a huge day passing, uh, especially not early on. Um, but he had that stretch where I think he had three passing touchdowns and four throws or something like that. Yeah. Finished the day, eighteen for thirty-one, two hundred yards, uh, passing three touchdowns, one pick. Um, and then ran for 65 yards, two rushing touchdowns, including the last one, which was like a 15 yard. Uh, it wasn't really even like a QB draw, it was just a scramble. He got in, um, or it was a QB draw. I'm tripping, it was, um, it was, yeah, but it was more like a design draw, yeah. But but took it in from about 15 yards out, got the job done, won the game in overtime. Um, in a big, big overtime win for Philly. Keeps everything in front of them. They are in control of their own destiny as much as it pains me to say it. Mm -hmm. For not just the NFC East, but also the one seed in the NFC, the top record in the NFL, um, Jalen Hurts. He's a playmaker, bro. Like, they don't matter how you want to slice it, dice it. Uh, people want to talk about the refs. People want to talk about his team, this or that, the whole line, the weapons. Bro, I don't care. We've seen it since college. If you need a play to be made, Jalen Hurts is a playmaker. 
Mm -hmm. cannot cut it any other way. So he has to be shouted out as a top performer in Week 12, um, getting the game-winning touchdown there in Philly. And it doesn't matter how bad he's played in the first half. It doesn't matter if the, like how the team is playing, bro. When that fourth quarter come, when OT come, you need to throw, you need to run. Like like I said, the playmaker, bro, he just, turn, just turns it on, bro. It's like he's always – like he's never rattled, bro. Like it's insane. Always pulls out these wins. So shout out to him for sure.